Hey guys, welcome! I'm so glad you decided to join us today. We're gonna have some fun in the book of First Peter. We're back. Last week we talked about hope. This week we're talking about faith. So I need you to go get your Bible. If you haven't gotten it yet, pause the video, go get your Bible because we're gonna open them today. We're gonna have some fun. Do you guys wanna have fun with us? We're gonna have a good time here today. Now, parents, I wanna let you know, that if you have young children, four years old and younger, there's gonna be a special lesson for you today at the end of the video with Miss Shannon. She's gonna teach the little ones. Miss Shannon's gonna do that at the end of the video. So stay tuned with us. And hey, let's start with some worship. Everybody on your feet, let's worship the Lord. Jesus 
But you'll appear in holy power And all will be made right You'll judge the evil in this world The time for sadness will be through And all God's people will rejoice Seen or heard from in over six months, the illustrious Jungle Jim and his faithful companion, Filbert Fiddleleaf III, have been spotted once again. This time, the two are making new discoveries in the deepest parts of the Amazonian jungle. What dangers await these two in this uncharted territory? For the bulletins, as events warrant. Crikey, mate! Time flies! <laughs> That cobra is squeezing in like a tube of toothpaste. Be strong! Be strong! He's rattling him like a tambourine. I got him! Yeah! Yes! We did it, mate! Philly, be strong and courageous, mate! That croc is wow, twisting him like a wet towel. Right, she's playing with you, camera two. Let's get camera two in close. This baby here is the runt of the litter. Look how long she is, but she's just a little one. He's striking him like a piñata. You see a snout right here, mate. She's got spines all up her back, just like armor. She's impenetrable, but her teeth. They're like swords, sharp swords. It's incredible. Get He's in getting there. rocked by the croc. God, watch the tail. You do not want to get struck by that tail. Ooh, talk about a facial. That's going to be ugly in the morning. It's going to be great, mate. Just stick with it. Crikey, oh, I love it when it gets rough. Here I go! Oh. Oh, come here, girl. Come here, girl. Oh, we're having a good time now. We're having a good time. See, so you think crocs roll humans? Now, Jungle Jim rolls crocs. Here we go. Here we are. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. Here we are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> calm down. Calm down. Calm down. And a girl, oh, this was so much fun. You come and see Jungle Jim again, okay? Have a good one. Let's check on Philly. Oh, Philbert, how are you, mate? Oh, I'm good. I, I think I'm getting used to this. Sure, yeah, getting used to it. Crikey, oh, what was that? Bring on the next creature. <laughs> now, mate, this is serious. We gotta go. Jungle Jim, what is it? Not a what, mate, but a who. Martha, do you smell it? <sighs> They're close. Ha 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 
Well, welcome back to another edition of What's Going On Out There. I'm your host, Tyler Tatiato. I want to begin this episode by thanking all of my loyal fans. So many of you were sending me encouraging messages asking me how I was doing after that conflict with the hippopotamus. I got both of your messages and it was super encouraging. So thank you to all of my fans out there. Now, let's kick it over to Harry who has another weather report for us. Harry, what can you tell us today about the weather in Huntington Beach? Yes, thank you, Tyler. As you can see, uh, it's a very light drizzle out here. Nothing to be concerned about. Should go away any second. Oh. Uh, uh, so the weather is going to be clear most of the week and uh, partly cloudy uh, with a small tip. Uh, it should be bright most of the time. And uh, yeah, the weather should be fine. You should get your twin suits on. And uh, just have a great week, all right? The weather's going to be beautiful. Back to you in the studio. Oh, I'm not going out there anytime soon. I don't do well in the humidity. Now, last week, our sports anchor Chip had a tragic encounter with a basketball while reporting sideline. Take a look. Are we live? Basketball is my favorite sport. Oh! My head! Well, Chip is currently recovering very nicely at home. And let me tell you, his hopes are high. His hopes are high. Chip, we're praying for a quick rebound, my friend, and hoping that you'll be back with us soon. But until then, we got our man Steve coming off the bench. Steve, what's going on out there in the world of sports? Thanks, Tyler. Do you kids want to be good at soccer? Do what I do. Well, great shot, Steve. I'll pick you on my team any day. <laughs> and now for our top story of the evening. Baby Shark is still at large, and he's causing many others to copy him in his very contagious dance moves. Take a look. Baby Shark, if you can hear me, please stop the madness. At least he's the only thing we have to worry about these days. Oh, oh what was that? Hungry hippo, hungry, hungry hippo. Hungry hippo, hungry, hippo. Hungry hippo, hungry, hungry hippo. Hungry hippo, hungry, hungry hippo. Eat you in a jar. Peanut butter high ho. Peanut butter high ho. Peanut butter high ho. Are you guys ready to dive into the Bible? Let's get into the Bible. 
all together. We're going to go back to the book of 1 Peter. That's what we looked at last week. We started the book of 1 Peter. Let's get back into 1 Peter. If you have a Bible like this one, a Bible that matches mine, you're going to find it on page 1014. 1014. And if you have a Read and Grow Picture Bible, how about you turn to 251? That's where we're going to be, 251. One. And I just want to let all the parents know, as you guys are turning to your Bibles, that if you have young children, maybe four years old and uh, younger, Miss Shannon is going to do a special lesson just for you guys after this video, okay? So just fast forward if you want to listen to that, or you can keep listening to this one. But Miss Shannon's going to do a special lesson just for you guys if you have young children. Now, last week, in 1 Peter, we learned that Peter is writing to this group of people that is scattered all over the place. They are being heavily persecuted, and now they're fleeing for their lives. And so Peter, he's writing to them this letter and reminding them of the hope that they have in Jesus Christ. Now, last week, we looked at the word hope. Is hope like, oh, I hope it comes true. Oh, is it going to happen? I'm not sure. Is that what hope is? In the Bible, hope is a confidence in God. It's in confidence in who he is, what he has said, and what he has done. See, we can trust, we can have hope in God because we know that God always does what he says. Now, every time that we think about God saving or every time that we think about the gospel, which we talked about last week, and I said, this is the most important thing that I can teach you. The most important thing that we can know is the gospel. So every time that we talk about the gospel, we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Here it is. I'm going to throw it up on the screen and I'm going to read it for you right now. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preach to you which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word that I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Paul is writing to these people and he's telling them the gospel. Do you remember what the gospel is? Do you remember that Jesus, he is the Christ, that he died for our sins and that he rose from the dead? You see, that's the most important thing that you could know as a person. That's the most important thing I can teach you. Do you know why? Because it says right here in our passage that we just read that this is what saves you. You see, we all need to stop and we need to admit that no matter how hard we try to do good things, we are always going to fall short. We have to be able to admit that as good as we think we are, the Bible actually tells us that we are not good at all. Now, let's say that someone came up to me. Maybe he looks just like me. And he offered me a whole bunch of money. And he said, hey, if you can reach up and grab this money, I will give it to you. Like right away, I'm like, I can reach that. I mean, this guy looks just like me. He's the same height as me. I can reach up and grab that. No big deal. You see what I just did? I just said, I can do that. Look at what I can do. Like I can reach that. He's not tall. I'm, I'm assessing the situation. Now, let's say that as I'm about to reach up, he actually says, no, 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 no. I'm going to be on top of the church. And now he's way up there on the top of the church and I'm way down low. And then he says, now reach up and get it. Jump. And so I start jumping as high as I can. I jump and jump and jump. It doesn't matter how many push-ups I do or how many squats I do. It doesn't matter how strong I am. It doesn't matter how long my arms are. It doesn't matter. I can never jump that high. This is what the Bible is telling us is that we need Jesus. It doesn't matter how hard I try. It doesn't matter how many good things I do. I will never be able to be forgiven for what I have done by what I do. God has to be the one to save me. 
So in 1 Peter, if you're there, let's look at chapter 1. Let's start in verse 9. It's kind of the end of our passage, but let's look at verse 9 because it says, Obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. You see, what do I need to be forgiven? What do I need to be saved? I need to put my faith in the gospel. You see, faith is what saves me. Faith is where I get forgiveness. It's not about what I do. It's about what Jesus has already done. And if I put my faith in that, well, then I will be saved. Now, what is faith? What is faith? Another word we can use is trust. Faith and trust, they go together. Now, have you ever heard of a trust fall before? I mean, they call it a trust fall because the point is, is that you would stand up on something and if you really trusted the person, if you really had faith that they would catch you, well, then you would be able to see that I have faith because I would then fall back and I would trust that they catch me. You know who's someone that always keeps his promise? It's God. And I know that he rose from the dead so that I can now put my confidence in him. Yeah, I got to stop trying to do good things. I got to put my trust in Jesus. That's where we're going to find salvation for our souls. It's in what Jesus has done. It's in the gospel. Now, if you have real saving faith, if you have really put your confidence in God, well, you're going to be able to see that in your life. Now, remember, Peter's writing to people who are scattered. They're going through a very difficult time. And what he says here in verse 6, check out verse 6 with me. He says, In this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved. Oh, grieved. Ouch, that hurts by various trials. These are hard times. So that the tested genuineness of your, keyword, faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Peter here is saying that even in a hard trial, you can rejoice. The Christian is not going to crumble over the trial. He's going to persevere and rejoice through the trial. So let's look at one more illustration. I work really hard at building this this tower of Legos. And I build that tower of Legos and I work hard at it and I build this structure. And then I have this egg. This egg here represents my keyword, faith. And now I put this egg inside my tower of Legos. I put my faith in what I have built in my tower that I made to protect my faith. Now let's say the trial comes, this big baseball bat. Now, is this tower that I have built, is that going to protect my faith? Is it going to stand firm when I hit that with the trial of life? No way. I mean, look at that thing explode. That thing didn't last. I put my faith in what I have made and what I do. When the trial comes, it's going to get destroyed. That's what trials do. It shows us if our faith is really in ourself or how about if I put my faith egg here in this container and this container, I take this container, I put my egg in there. And then when the trial comes against that and I whack that egg, is it going to be protected? It's going to stand firm because my faith is not in what I have made. My faith is in God. It's in the gospel that he is the Christ, that he died for sins and rose from the dead. That's why the gospel is so important. That's why faith is something we have to understand. It's not if I know it's true. It's if I put my trust in the gospel, in the fact that Jesus is the Christ, that he died for sin and rose again. Now, if you have our picture Bible here, now let's just look at real quick. Let's look at some pictures in our mind of the gospel. Do you see on page 51? Here, do you see Jesus dying for our sins? I mean, you can go to 250, page 251. I mean, look at the whole thing is about Jesus dying for our sins. This is a picture of what Jesus came to do. He is the Christ. But then he didn't just die for our sins. Do you remember what happened next? 
he rose from the dead. And now he is seated in heaven at the right hand of the Father. He's on the throne. Why? Because he is the king. He is the Christ. And so that's the most important thing we could be talking about. It's the gospel, not just knowing it, but what is now the response? It's faith. Putting my trust in that. My confidence in God. So let's keep memorizing 1 Peter chapter 1. Miss Bree is going to help us now memorize verse 5 all together, all right? This week, we are adding on to our 1 Peter chapter 1 memory verse. We will be learning together right now, verse 5. And once we get the hang of that a little bit, we will go all the way to the tippity top and practice 1 Peter 1, 3 to verse 5. So let's learn verse 5 together. It says, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for our salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Very good. Let's do that one more time. Verse 5 says, Who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. Awesome job. Now let's go all the way back to the tippity top to verse 3 and put it all together. All right, here we go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. Very good. So practice that a couple times and then let's do it super speedy fast. All together from the tippity top from verse 3. Here we go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Very good. Well, keep practicing your memory verse and we will add on more next week. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us. And if you think this video is over, it is not. I want to let you know about two things. One is if you want to be in a future Kidsman video, have your parents email me at taylor at compasshb.com and I will let them know the next opportunity for you to be in a video. Keep sending me your Bible verses. We're going to use those as well. But now... For the first time, we have a special lesson for our four-year-old and younger. So stay tuned right now for Miss Shannon. Take it away. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you, that you joined us here for lesson time. All right, so let's sit crisscross applesauce, put our hands in our lap. Let's get ready to listen to the Bible together. Let's. You know what we love to do is to get our ears ready to listen to the Bible. We open our eyes really wide. That way we can see what God is going to show us in his word. And I actually have two friends that I want to introduce you guys to today. These are my friends, Pinky Corn and Blue Blue. Can you guys say hello? Hey, hi, 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 hi. All right, Pinky Corn and Blue Blue are going to help us with our lesson today. And today we are going to learn about faith. Miss Shannon, Miss Shannon, what, what is faith? I'm so glad that you asked. Faith is when we put our trust in Jesus. We put our trust in the gospel. Let's actually open up our picture Bibles to page 252. And we're going to see what the Bible shows us that the gospel is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this first picture shows us here that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And he died on the cross for us. But then later it shows us that he rose from the grave. Oh. Yes. Do you guys want to practice our gospel motions all together? Oh, yeah, we want to learn. Awesome. I know that you guys know the motions too. Let's do it all together. Ready? 
Jesus is the Christ. Jesus died for sin. And Jesus rose again. Yeah, good job, you guys. I mean, this is so much fun. Oh, you guys thought that was fun? Do you guys want to play a game? We love games. We love games. Oh, good. This is how you play. Pinky Corn, do you trust Blue Blue? Yeah. Oh, good. So you're going to play a game where you are going to put your faith in Blue Blue. You're going to trust him and you're going to fall into his arms and he's going to catch you when you fall. I get to catch you, Pinky Corn. Oh, well, if you say that you trust Blue Blue, then you're going to have to show it by falling into his arms. Can you do that, Pinky Corn? Uh, yeah, I think I can. All right, let's count them down. Are you guys ready? Three, two, one. Yay! Yay! I caught you, Pinky Corn. Good job. You guys, that is what faith is. See how Pinky Corn didn't just say that she trusted Blue Blue. She actually had to show it by her actions. She fell into Blue Blue's arm and he caught her. Well, that is what we're learning now today. And we actually have to put our faith in the gospel, right? So I want all of you guys to get your two fingers out and we are going to do the gospel together on our fingers, all right? So put the first finger up and wiggle it around. This is gonna be you guys. This is us, the little finger. And then this is our God finger. And we are separated from God. Move your fingers apart, so far apart. And we're separated from God. And the only way that we can be reconciled and put back together with God is through the cross. It's putting our faith in what Jesus did on the cross. Miss Shannon, yes. Miss Shannon, that's the gospel. It is. That's right. That is the gospel. And we have to put our faith in the gospel. All right. So let's review what we learned about today. We're going to do our motions and we are going to say that we are going to put our faith in the gospel. Let's do it all together. Are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah. Are you guys ready? All right, let's do it. We're going to put our faith in the gospel. Nice job. Let's do it one more time. We are going to put our faith in the gospel. Nice job, you guys. We had so much fun with you today learning about faith, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye, friends. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Love seeing you. So keep memorizing the Bible, keep sending me videos, and we'll see you next week.